Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Slang Hope. And I got another video for y'all today. And this one is like two in one. It's going to be what I do to get my waves. And it's also going to be the history of the do-rag. You know, I know a lot of times we just think the do-rag is just some something to keep your head down and relaxed. But it's so much more to the history of the do-rag and our cultural ties to it. So... I will start by talking about the different type of brushes that I use, right? So this is a soft brush. I don't really use this. It's a soft brush, but like if I cut my hair in a one, this is something that I could use because it won't really hurt my scalp. It's a soft brush. This one is a hard brush. This one gets gets a little gets a little softer when it gets wet. But when my hair gets a little deep, maybe like in the afro mode, and like I still could compress it with the do-rag. I will use the harder brush because I could still get into like my scalp, into my, you know, I could get my deep waves with this, with this brush. This one is the in-between brush. This is like when you in between, you know, between that, that low cut and that fro, you know what I'm saying? This is a perfect brush. And if you notice, it curves a little bit. This brush is straight. This one curves a little bit. So it kind of like, it's good for like the sides, you know, it kind of like, if you, if you look at it, this one kind of like, it's just straight. This one right here, it kind of like gets more of your hair and it's, it's good for like these sides right here, right? Like when you use this one, it's kind of like straight and then you got to go on top and then you got to go on the side. So it's like, it's, it's really a lot of more brushing with this one. And I don't even really use this one. I don't even use this one at all, to be honest, because I don't let my hair get that, you know, that long. But this is one of like the best brushes, um... I use Diane. Um, you, probably, you probably could get it in different brands, but like the brushes that curve are the best ones. I don't really do a lot to my hair, to be honest, because my hair texture, you know, y'all already know I'm Garifu now, you know, I'm a black carob. So my hair texture might be a little different than y'all's. But nevertheless, this is definitely a great brush to use. You know, when I shampoo my hair, I usually shampoo my hair in the shower. Like when I shower, I shampoo my hair and I brush in the shower. Um, That's also for better results. And once you brush your hair, you got to add some type of nutrients to your hair. I don't really got to do much. Again, my skin gets oily. So my hair, you know, gets that natural oil from my skin. But I always put a little oil and stuff like that after, you know, I, I wash that oil off my hair. After I clean my hair, I got to put something in there to feed my scalp. Your hair, your hair. And your scalp needs nutrients, so you gotta feed it. So I just brush, you gotta be on your brush game, and you also gotta sleep with your do rag, you know. So you start seeing the results again. Like you could get different type of brushes for like different lengths of hair, but I like to keep it in between. It's not it's not too hard, it's not too soft. Pause, but you know, it's in between and it gets the job done. Now about the do rag, the do rag, so in college, I took a class. It was in my cultural cultural anthropology class. It was about culture as it relates to fashion. No, fashion as it relates to culture. So I did my paper. I did my research paper on the do rag, and you know I always wear the do rag, and you know it was just you know for my hair. But I always knew there was like some type of cultural ties to the do rag because. A lot of black people wear it, right? But I never knew how deep those cultural ties was. So when I started looking into the do-rag, I found out that the first people to use the do-rag were women during slavery. They used the do-rag first before men even started using it. So this is like in the 1800s. Women were using the do-rag. And part of the reason they was using the do-rag was because it was a remnant back home. They was covering their hair. And two, it, was, it, it, it could be made out of a cheap cloth when they was over here. So they was wearing the do-rag to protect them from the sun and also to hold on to their cultural ties back home from Africa. Now, fast forward, I couldn't really find information about why or how the women stopped wearing it or maybe they got better stuff to put on their head. But around the 1970s, late 1970s, 19, early 1980s, you know, a lot of black men started to like really cater to their hair. They started to like, you know, people was getting jerry curls like in the 60s, 70s. You know, people started getting waves. So men started putting a lot of effort and work into taking care of their hair. So the do-rag came back on the scene. It resurfaced. So now men was wearing the do-rag. You know, the women were no longer really wearing it. The men was wearing it. And then with the with the emergence of waves, you know, 
guys was taking care of their hair. You know what I'm saying? You know, you want to look cute. You want to look fly. You want to do your thing. Now, also with the do-rag, it's, it's a whole bunch of other things that go with the do-rag and the cultural ties, right? Because it's like, usually people wear the do-rag, it kind of like looks inside out, right? Like, if you notice, nobody really wears the do-rag like this, right? Nobody really wears the do-rag this way. Like, most people will wear it like the other way, right? With, with, the, with the thread sticking out. Um, some people might say that's because you don't want the lines in your head. You don't want that line in your head, which makes sense. Um, so I don't really know, but that makes more sense, right? That makes the most sense why people don't wear it the other way. Another thing is back in the days, people used to tie their do-rag. They would tie the do-rag in the back. Like some people, like 50 Cent used to wear his do-rag like this. He would tie the back. It would look like a little, you know, like a little ponytail. A lot of people didn't really just leave it, lay down and relax. A lot of people thought it was fruity back in the day. So sometimes people will roll it up and tuck it in on the sides, you know? So that's the do-rag. The do-rag has a cultural tied to it um today a lot of people are cultural appropriating the do-rag you see the whole bunch of people wearing the do-rag a whole bunch of different cultures but it's is it's so much more than just a head tie you know for black folks and i know a lot of y'all probably didn't really know that the do-rag had that history but that's the history so when i wear my do-rag i'm conscious that you know it means much more than just a head rag and you got to remember they also started criminalizing the do-rag, right? When the NBA, NBA the NFL, they, they have bans. They have banned people from coming in. Like, they have banned the players from, like, kind of, like, wearing the do-rags to, like, the facilities and stuff like that. I know, especially for football. Um, I don't know if they kind of, like, changed those rules. But this was definitely something that was enforced that you couldn't wear the do-rag along with, like, you know, dressing pro protocols that they established in, like, around 2005. So there's, there's obvious that there was an attack on the do-rag, just like there's an attack in a hoodie, right? Like when we wear the hoodie, the hoodie when we wear the do-rags, it's always like a problem. There's always like some type of issue connected to like some type of law enforcement or, or whatever the case might be. But everybody else, right? Like anybody else could appropriate it and they'll be just fine. So there's a reason why they, wanna, they want us to shy away from holding on to some of the things. And when, when, we, and when we talk about fashion, right, I also want to talk about because it relates to fashion. And I remember back in the days how we used to wear a lot of black brands, right? Like we used to wear like Rockerwear. We used to wear G-Unit. We used to wear um like Fat Farm, like Baby Fat, like, you know, the Apple Bottoms, you know, the, for the ladies. You know, we used to wear a lot of black brands. And at some point we went away from that. At some point we stopped wearing that and we started wearing European clothing. You know, we we wanted our clothes to be tighter. We, we wanted to relate more to the master, right? So... I just wanted to like throw that in there. Like it's more than just fashion. It's also something that's cultural. It's also tied to your heritage. And they really don't want us to be tied to anything. You know, and, and we see that. But this is the video. The waves, the do-rag. Let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know if y'all was wearing do-rags, how y'all was wearing them back in the day. Would y'all still laying them down, relax? Was y'all tying it up? Was y'all tucking it in? Um, let me know, did y'all know that the women were wearing do-rags before the men? Um, let me know what y'all think, and make sure y'all like it, keep this thing going, that's how people get to see my stuff, you know, you know, I guess that's your little Black History Month gift, <laughs> but y'all take care out there, peace.